All right, what's up guys? My name is Alex. A lot of you guys probably know me as uh, Alex from Closeify on Twitter. And so I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more about my actual story with you guys and how Closeify came to be because you know, it's 2022. So about, uh, about three years ago, I was starting off in college. I had no money. You know, I was probably in a very similar situation to a lot of you guys. Um, you know, I was working a little tennis court job where I was just managing the tennis courts. I think I was getting like $7 an hour at the time. That was in like 2017, maybe or 2018. Um, went to selling shoes. And then in 2019 um, was when I discovered online business, started off in e-com, was a whole mess. Um, but I'm going to be sharing a little bit about the story of how Closeify came to be. And then in you know other videos, I'll go a little bit more in depth into the strategies that I've used to grow it. Um, and also just a little heads up, the quality is going to get a lot better. I'm actually visiting home right now. So I'm not in my Miami apartment. Um, and I also don't have any of like my camera, microphone, any of that stuff with me here right now. But I figured I'll just put the first video out just to get it out. So let me cut over to uh, this Google Doc where I can go into the story a little bit more. So this is kind of my story slash Closeify story. So again, my original plan was, you know, go good grades, good college, good job. I was planning on doing investment banking because that's literally just what I saw makes the most money essentially. Um, and so I did have good grades. I had like a 4.1 GPA out of high school. Um, I got into a lot of really top colleges like Case Western, Babson, Carnegie Mellon, etc. Um, and senior year of high school, you know, I discovered online business and it was actually funny. I had to write a six page paper on an unpopular opinion. And at this point I was on like e-com Twitter, not necessarily like money Twitter. Uh, so I saw a lot of like, I uh, saw a lot of college slander. And so even despite about to go to college, I decided to do the paper on, you know, college isn't worth it. Um, and so it was really funny. I actually ended up finding, you know, obviously a, a ton of evidence supporting why it's actually such a fiscally irresponsible decision assuming you're going to go into debt um and so that was kind of like planting the seed in my mind for the first time of like hey college really isn't all that that it's hyped up to be um especially if you know you want to go into business or something of that sort um so after i kind of wrote that paper i actually kind of like brainwashed myself to like this really is kind of like not worth it um so anyways i started off um in e-com so my last two months of senior year of high school incredibly unsuccessfully. My first part, like seven stores, didn't get a single sale. Like they were horrible. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I would continue attempting throughout my first semester of college. So August, 2019 through December, 2019, basically burned through all of my money that I had saved up from reselling sneakers and my, that one little job. Um, and then I only had one store that got to break even. I was selling these like little galaxy roses near Christmas time. Um, it got to break even. And then my ad account got disabled and that store just died. So then I took the second half of December off because I kind of was at a point where I was like, I don't really have the money to continue testing um, drop shipping. This was also at a point where like organic TikTok drop shipping wasn't a thing. So I thought I had to spend money on ads. So I was getting ready to pivot. I was reading tweets from like Nate Schmidt and I was kind of just going down this rabbit hole. Then on January 4th, you know, I see a tweet, you know, from Caden that you guys, you know, should probably know too. Shout out Caden. And I was like, I'm looking for one more person to help make their first dollar online via internet phone sales. And I just DM'd him and I was like, dude, what's internet phone sales? He explained it to me. I bought this little PDF off of him for like 10, 15 bucks or something like that. And it just took off. Like, and I knew I could sell because once he explained it to me, he's like, you'd be selling the courses that you had just purchased yourself. And I knew I could do it because I just bought them. So I understood exactly why people are buying these courses. And so I was right. I got my first client literally in two days to sell an Amazon FBA course. And I was closing over 50% with no train. Keep in mind, it was only a $250 course. So like it wasn't hard to sell, but so like my first ever commission was $37 and it was like the best feeling in the world because that was the first money I'd ever made online. And so then it was just like another week goes by another client, another week, another client. And I was scaling faster than I could even handle. And so Josh is, you know, he's my chief sales officer at Closeify. Um, we hadn't really done any business together, but I was kind of like pulling him into the online business world. I was like, hey, Josh, like try drop shipping, try starting an agency, like start something. And um, I was just like, yo, Josh, I have like more sales calls than I handle or than I can handle. Like, can I, can I outsource some of these sales calls to you? Like I'll teach you and train you. He was like, sure. Um, so 
he was like all the way across the country from me doing this with me, sales calls, working with a few of our clients at the sales agency. Um, COVID hits, we get sent home, we lock in on it. You know, we got sent home in March, 2020, April, 2020 was our first ever $10,000 a month. We were on our way. Another big event, June, 2020, I buy Iman Godzi's copy paste agency. Biggest investment I'd ever made at that point. I think it was maybe like 4,800 USD at the time. And I ended up, you know, it ended up being the most important uh, investment I ever made purely for giving me access to that community of agency owners. So there was a WhatsApp group chat of like 150 plus, you know, high level agency owners. And I'm the only one with a sales agency. And so everyone's like asking me for sales rats, sales advice. Can you listen to a sales call for me? Um, I explained to them my agency. They didn't really want to work with my agency because we were expensive. So they're asking if I could help them get people you know, in-house, if I could train reps for them. And so, so after months of hearing this, in November of 2020, we launched Plug and Play Closer, which was where we were actually charging for sales training at the time. We trained people over the course of like four to six weeks, I think was that. I think it was probably, like, probably more like five to eight weeks. And um, after they were trained, we guaranteed them placement, which was with a client from Copy Paste Agency. And so this was good because it validated the business model and it still worked, but it was so inefficient. Like the business owners also paid us five grand. And so like, you know, double dipping and charging business owners and closers was cool. But I just kept interviewing people that had worked with recruiters and they all said the exact same things. It's too expensive. It takes too long. And they want experience reps, so there's no ramping period. Because you can't, like, you know, the sales reps that we placed, they got started off on, like, less than five calls a week. And then they had to, like, you know, close, meet KPI, and then they would get fed more calls. It's just a very long and inefficient process. And so I was like, what if I recruit an experienced rep? All of a sudden, no training required, no ramping time. And then that problem was solved. So now I was like, how do I make this faster and more affordable? So what I realized was I had to remove human labor from the equation. And instead of interviewing and set, selecting closers for clients, I could actually let them do the interview themselves via a self-serve hiring platform. And that's how Closeify was born. So I launched the MVP, which was literally just an Airtable spreadsheet. There were literally two tabs, one that said closers, one that said business owners. And at first I charged both parties to have access and they could just reach out to each other. It was just like literally it could have been an Excel sheet even. And, um, so I launched it with an MVP and I launched it with a tweet, which is pinned to my thread still. And I woke up to like 50 plus DMs of people wanting to hire sales reps, which was nuts to me. I didn't even have a very big audience at that time. And um, so the idea was validated to me. And so I went and I took my uh, sales agency savings and I went and hired a developer to build a better platform. And so keep in mind, I was also doing the, all of this or the previous stuff. Um, while I was a full-time division one student athlete. So I was building Closeify like in college in 2021. And I was still a student athlete at that time. Um, so like I had to wake up at 5 a.m. for practice. I'd go to bed at midnight because, you know, I had weights, I had classes, I had homework, I had, you know, other things. Um, so by the time I was like taking sales calls, like doing marketing, like doing all this stuff, like my days were ridiculously long. It was super unhealthy too, by the way. Um, but so I basically knew I needed to be all in because I was like, I was drained every single day. I felt horrible every single day. I had no energy. Um, and so in April of 2021, I dropped out of college. Um, I wasn't making a ton of money at this point because like I said, Closeify was like being developed. Um, but then we did 20 grand our first month in July. We did like 25 grand in August and September, um, like each. And then my first month I moved to Miami, we did like 50K in October. And we've been scaling since then, most recently doing 125 grand in May. And so... That's the story of how Closeify was born. Like I said, I'm going to go into more details on some of the specific growth strategies in another video when I get, you know, back into my Miami apartment and I get, you know, better camera, microphone, etc. But, you know, let me know what video you want to see from me next and I'm going to start cranking out a lot more of these for you guys.